a lot of people sit up there and they look at these athletes and they say, we just want our sports. And here's where they're wrong. I've never encountered an athlete making a political statement in a game. Colin Kaepernick kneeled while the national anthem was playing. You know, John Carlos and Tommy Smith raising the black fist in the 68 Olympics after they performed. You had Jim Brown, Lou Alcindor, a.k.a. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Bill Russell, and all of those guys collaborating with one another in support of Muhammad Ali. But it wasn't while they were on the football field or the basketball court. They gave you your sports. You didn't have to listen to them before. You didn't have to listen to them after. You heard them because of what they give you in sports. Now that it's all said and done, the team's been sold. How do you feel? I feel fabulous. I feel very good. Everything is uh, just the way it should be, really. It may have worked out differently, but it's, it's good. Why was Donald Sterling allowed to hang on so long? This is the great question of the Donald Sterling story. It's crazy for me to think about it right now in this moment. We literally knew that he sort of felt that way, and we used to be like, all right, it's whatever. You know what I mean? He, he write the check, so it's cool. I guess my pleasure of going to basketball games superseded my, my conscience, and I chose to stick my head in the sand. I did. I chose to stick my head in the sand about that. This has never been a country that has known what to legally and almost truthfully morally do morally. with racists because there's too much racism baked into everything. Racism has to be a crime that is punishable in some other way than shame. Because shame isn't enough. So you're done, you're okay. Well, I'm okay. I'm okay. Is the NBA okay? I'm not sure about them. The flex that the players had ultimately was a good thing because, look, did they get rid of the only racist in the league? Probably not, but I think it was important to go through that period of humiliation for the NBA so that if presented with that problem again, they will be motivated to get rid of the problem before it becomes a huge national embarrassment. You know, I, I think there's probably times that we need a push every once in a while. You know, we needed the war and Ali to give a push. We needed Arthur Ashe to give us a push. You know, we needed Jackie Robinson to give us a push. And then, you know, we take it to another level. And I think the Donald Sterling thing, it made us say, wait a minute, we have to take a stand here. The Sterling controversy may have helped me find my voice, but I think the biggest thing is just becoming more aware. Like, there's been a ton of things that have happened since then that are way worse than the Sterling situation. But we know what's going on now, and we know that if you just act like everything is just okay, then you're part of the problem. Good evening. Tonight is a celebration of sports, celebrating our accomplishments and our victories. But in this moment of celebration, we actually start the show tonight this way. What has happened over time and especially with the speech at the ESPYs in 2016. People are a lot more comfortable speaking now about how they feel in situations that don't feel right. We stand before you as fathers, sons, husbands, brothers, uncles, but Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown, Tamir Rice, Eric Gardner, Laquan McDonald, Alton Sterling, Philando Castile. This is also our reality. I think we're in a dramatically better place today than we were when Donald Sterling was the racist franchise owner of the Los Angeles Clippers. And we have to recognize that we're in a better place because the players themselves said enough is enough. We're now in an age of player empowerment where players understand the influence that they have, they understand their connection to culture, and, you know, unashamedly take ownership of that. There's only 5,000 people that's ever touched an NBA floor. NBA players have the biggest voice in the history of sport, all of sport. 
African American basketball players have the biggest voice for African American men, possibly in the world. And if you look at every year since then, their cohesiveness has only gotten stronger. I think they've seized that power, and frankly, they haven't looked back. You know, most people are never asked their opinion, by the way. Now, we have a choice not to speak. And I, and I tell my athletes that all the time. You don't have to, but we do have the opportunity if we want to use it. And the Donald Sterling event absolutely showed from that day forward, athletes, they're, they're ready to go. Do you know that you have a whole team that's black that plays for you? You just, do I know? I support them and give them food and clothes and cars and houses. What I love about that tape, to me, the, the brilliance, and not intended brilliance, but brilliant in terms of the way in which it echoes race and power in American culture, is really, for me, one phrase. Who makes the game? Do I make the game or do they make the game? Who makes the game? The players are the reason you watch the game. They make the game.